Here's how you configure hyperidle. Now, first of all, you're gonna have to create a config file, config hyper hyperidle.conf. So I've already created that and I've pasted an example config that's way over here. So you can just scroll down on wiki.hyper.land, you can find the hyperidle part of the wiki through the search function, and then you can just copy this example and paste it into hyperidle.conf. Okay, once you do that, next thing you should do is of course make sure to execute it every single time you start hyperland. So I've just done that over here. Okay, I've already run the command before. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what this modules folder is about, it's something that I call modularity. I cover it in much more detail in the first link in the description. So you can just go ahead and check that out. Okay, now here, I've just added in hyperidle as a command, which is the last one over here, along with, okay, I already had this. But anyway, that's that. Next thing, if you're using UWSM, which is actually the recommended way to start Hyperland, you can just use systemctl dash dash user enable dash dash now hyperidle.service. So this starts Hyperidle as a service instead of an application like you would in Hyperland. Now, there are a couple of variables to go through, so we'll just go through them all. They're pretty self-explanatory. The main part is actually this config. This example config has everything that we would need. It's kind of like a drop-in file. So you can just take this file, put it inside Hyperidle, and you're good. You don't have to do much else. Right? And so, let's get started. Lock command, you don't have to worry about dbus here too much, right? It's basically saying lock command is a command to run when it's receiving a dbus lock event. Now, what is dbus? dbus is a message bus system. Okay, so if two programs want to talk to each other, but then they don't have any direct link or connection with each other, they can use dbus in order to communicate with each other. You, can, you also use dbus for notifications and whatnot, but that's all you need to know about it. dbus is a message bus system. It's a way for two programs that have nothing to do with each other to communicate. Okay, that's that. So lock command, basically is pretty simple, right? Just the command you execute when you lock your screen and unlock command, command to execute when you unlock your screen, unlock command. So what happens? What should I run? What should I do when the computer actually gets locked on unlock command? What should I do when the computer gets unlocked? Before sleep command. So let's say before you sleep, you wanted to lock your screen. That's the command that you would use over here. This is the variable which you would use in order to set the command that actually locks your screen before you go to sleep. Then after sleep command is going to be what happens after I come out of sleep in terms of the computer. Well, after you come out of sleep, you're going to, of course, want to turn on the display, right? That's the command that we'll be using. Then we have ignore dbus inhibit, ignore system d inhibit, and ignore wayland inhibit. Now, idle, in idle inhibition is this really simple thing where your computer is just not allowed to sleep. You can kind of think of it as coffee. So if you've used pre-configured setups before, or if you've been on a desktop environment, okay, and you've been on something like GNOME, you should have seen something like a coffee icon that says idle inhibit or something like that, right? So it basically keep you, keeps your system awake for longer, prevents it from just turning off or turning off the display or going to sleep or stuff like that. It's basically inhibiting the idle behavior that's dictated by hyperidle. That's it. If you want to ignore inhibition, you basically want your computer to go to sleep despite any inhibit commands that are being sent. Okay, and that's that. Then we have inhibit sleep, which is sleep inhibition mode. We have 0, 1, 2, then 3, which are further described over here. Okay, so 3 makes your system wait until this session gets locked by a lock screen app. This is really good if you want a lot of security or if you're paranoid for whatever reason. Uh, to be honest, nobody can pretty much actually use your computer if you use a tiling window manager and you have unorthodox keybinds. Like let's say you, you, for whatever reason, you start your terminal with super shift control alt T. Uh, nobody's going to know how to do that. But anyway, in case you wanted to make sure that your screen got locked by a lock screen app right before you went to sleep, you can use three. Okay, you can use three to make sure that that actually happens and then the computer goes to sleep. Then we have two, which is auto, which selects either three or one, depending on whether hyperidle detects if you want to launch hyperlock before sleep. Okay, so that's what it is by default. And then we have one, which makes the system wait until hyperidle launched this command. So either you want to wait until your session gets locked by any lock screen app, doesn't necessarily have to be hyperlock, it also could be sway lock, or with one, you can just make the system wait until you run this command, which is before sleep command. That's it. And zero, just disable sleep inhibition entirely. 
Okay, that's sad. And then we have listeners. Now, in Hyper Idol, listeners are actually the most fun part because here's why. You can think of listeners as friends who stand by 24-7, just watching your computer all the time, doing stuff for you whenever you ask them to. So let's say I have a listener which waits for 500 seconds. And let's say when I'm away from my computer, let's say I go to grab a coffee. 500 seconds later, my friend here, this listener, is just going to tell me, hey, you were idle. It's just going to send me a notification and it's going to say you were idle. So if I change the brightness, you see this notification right here. It's just going to send a notification that's telling me that I'm idle. And then when I come back and then when I move my mouse or I press a button on the keyboard or do any action that causes on resume to be triggered, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a notification that says welcome back. Okay, we'll just increase the brightness as an example. And here it's just going to say welcome back, right? That's that. So listeners are your friends, which stand by 24 seven, just waiting to do stuff for you. That's it. Think about how nice listeners are. They're great all the time, right? Then every listener has a timeout in seconds after idling for timeout seconds on timeout with fire. Same thing for on resume when you're just basically using your computer. Then you have a couple of variables in the listener category as well. So you have timeout, which is the idle time in seconds. On timeout, what command should I execute? On resume, what command should I execute? And ignore inhibit, basically ignore any idle inhibitor. So just, just say something like, I don't want to be inhibited by anything. I just want to go to sleep. That's what this ignore inhibit variable is allowing you to do. Okay, now here is the full hyper idle example with hyperlock. So let's zoom in so you can see it. Okay, great. Now we'll actually just go here so you can see it even better. Okay, awesome. Now, in general, we just have a bunch of commands before we actually get to the listener part. So I'll just go over those. Lock command. Now, what is this? What are these two pipes doing over here? And what is this syntax that you probably have never seen before? Well, it's a way for avoiding starting multiple hyperlock instances, right? Let's say you already have hyperlock running, but you don't want to, of course, start more lock screens. Last thing you want is multiple lock screens where you have to type your password 50 different times in order to get through it. Sounds like a nightmare, right? You don't want that, which is why you check whether hyperlock is already running. And if that fails, okay, these two pipes, whenever you see them in a shell context, like this, this context, for example, is a shell context because you're executing a command, right? So whenever you see these two ones, it basically means if this command fails, then you're going to execute this command. So if PID of hyperlock fails, you're going to execute hyperlock. Now, if I run PID of hyperlock, it's not going to give me any output, but it's going to give me a exit signal that's different from zero. So what it's going to do is give me this red arrow looking thing over here, which basically means that the command failed. And so if the command did fail, then you're going to execute hyperlock. Now, the same functionality can be applied to your app launcher. So instead of me having to press super D, which is what I use for my run launcher, okay, and then having to press escape, because if I press super D over and over, what it would do is just launch the app again and again, right, it doesn't close it. You can implement toggle functionality for Rafi in this case, by using this same syntax. So if I try to kill Rafi, but then that fails, I'm just going to execute Rafi, right, Rafi dash show D run. What do you think is going to happen? This. So I can bind this to a command, which is basically what I've done. And so when I press super D, it launches Rafi. But if Rafi is already running, then it's going to kill it. If it's not already running, then it runs it. Pretty simple, right? That's how you create a toggle function. Then before sleep command, we're just locking the session, lock before suspend. After sleep command, you're going to turn on the display automatically without having to press a key twice to turn on the display. That's what I was talking about earlier. Then we have a couple more listeners. Pretty simple. So two and a half minutes, what are we going to do? Here on timeout, which is going to decrease the brightness to the minimum possible so that we can get a bunch of energy savings. And we'll, we can also get a little warning that stuff's actually starting to go idle. And then on resume, when we get back, we're just going to restore the brightness. Same thing for keyboard backlight, just reduce the brightness if timed out. And if resumed, then you're going to restore the brightness. For this one, for five minutes, you're going to lock the session, okay? For five and a half minutes, like 30 seconds later, you're going to turn off the display. And then finally, 30 minutes later, which is 1800 seconds, you're going to suspend the PC. And that should pretty much be it. That's how you use Hyperidle to get desktop environment level idling in Hyperland, which is a Wayland compositor.
If you want to know how to make a custom theme switcher like this, which allows you to change the theme whenever you want, gives you this beautiful gradient over here, along with knowing how to make Waybar configs like this, custom, you know, wallpapers and whatnot like this one, logout menus like this, lock screens like the one that you saw earlier, like this basically, and a hell of a lot more, go ahead and click the first link in the description. I show you exactly how to do this step by step so that you don't have to touch another YouTube tutorial in your life again. The amount of effort and the amount of time that I've put into this to make sure that you get the best possible experience ever is simply insane. I spent two hours working on this thing every single day without quitting, okay? Just so that you could get this setup right over here. And you're not just getting it because I'm not just giving you a fish because if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime, right? or woman for that matter. <laughs> I teach you how to fish for a lifetime so you can make setups that you actually enjoy working at and enjoy being more productive and enjoy getting more stuff done. So if you're into that and if you want to make a setup in which you're hella productive, you get a lot more done and all while looking as best as it can, go ahead and click the first link in the description. <sighs> if you liked it, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising.